Donald Trump is surging to new heights according to recently released 2024 election polls. He's tied up Harris in Virginia, he is dominating in the swing states, and he even leads nationally according to the New York Times. And so today, we're going to be taking a look at the updated electoral map as a result of these developments. And so before we get to the polls, we're going to fill in the solid states for both candidates just so that we can narrow down this map. We're going to begin with the Harris states. She's going to win California, Hawaii, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maryland, the District of Columbia, and the 1st District of Maine. While for Trump, he is easily going to carry Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, North and South Dakota, all of Nebraska except the 2nd District, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana, South Carolina, and Alaska. The former president takes an early lead already with 125 electoral votes. Taking a look at this new Virginia a poll now. Donald Trump ties up Kamala Harris in a poll of 1,000 adults, both candidates at 45 percentage points. This is devastating for the Harris campaign. It's a state that Joe Biden carried by 10.1 percent just four years ago. Today, she isn't even leading in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And so this is going to be a hotly contested state. Virginia has essentially become a swing state at this point. It's just as competitive as other states like Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. And considering that Virginia does have 13 electoral votes, it is going to be pretty important. Donald Trump now has essentially added Virginia on to the battlegrounds map. Now, in this poll, there was also a survey of registered voters, and that had Kamala Harris leading by 2%, but still, 2% is within the margin of error, and considering Biden's double-digit victory here four years ago, she is absolutely not where she needs to be. What's more is that in 2021, when Glenn Youngkin, the Republican, won the governorship against Democrat Terry McAuliffe, Youngkin was leading at the very end, but only at the very end. Throughout the entirety of the 2021 election cycle, Terry McAuliffe was on track to become the state's next governor. But in the end, Glenn Youngkin surged in the polling and eventually won the election. And that is what we see with Donald Trump every single time. He always polls significantly better at the very end of a campaign season in late October and early November. He always polls much better then than he does in September. And if things continue the way that they have in the past, Donald Trump could be on track to flipping the state of Virginia as a whole. And if that happens, Kamala Harris has absolutely zero chance at becoming the next president. We also have a new poll from the New York Times, and it shows Donald Trump leading against Kamala Harris, according to 2,400 registered voters. This is the eighth poll in a row where Trump has led, according to the New York Times, which is a very left-leaning pollster. In fact, they were one of the most inaccurate of 2020. 20 just because they overestimated Joe Biden so much. If the former president wins the popular vote or even comes close to winning the popular vote, he is going to become the next president. Trump could lose the popular vote by one, two, even three percentage points and still get to 270 electoral votes. Kamala Harris has to win the national vote by at least three to five percentage points. If she can't do that, she's not going to win. And currently, it doesn't seem like she will. And so coming back to the map, we're going to fill in some of the likely states, states that Harris or Trump are going to win by 7 to 15 points. Remember, a solid state is going to go to either candidate by 15 points or more. And so Kamala Harris is still going to win Washington and Oregon, just not by the virtually 20-point margins that Joe Biden won the state by in 2020. These states might be decided by around 10 to 15. We also have Illinois. 19 electoral votes will easily go to the vice president, but again, just by under 15 points. We also have Colorado. Colorado. New polling shows Harris leading by just above that double digit mark. She is not going to do better than Joe Biden in 2020. Joe Biden carried the state by nearly 14 points. There's no way Harris even gets close to that. She is also the favorite in New York and New Jersey, although these are two states where Democrats have been embroiled in scandal. In New York, we, of course, had Andrew Cuomo and his resignation as a result of sexual harassment allegations. And then the new current governor, Kathy Hochul, along with Mayor Eric Adams, both of them are very unpopular. And, of course, in New Jersey, we had Senator Bob Menendez, who was convicted multiple times for bribery. We also have Delaware in the likely blue category. This state is simply not as liberal as many of its neighbors. 
neighbors. And for Trump, his likely states are going to give him a significant boost. We're going to begin up in Iowa and Ohio, two states that were pretty competitive in the 2020 election, or at least people thought so. Because in 2016, Trump flipped both Iowa and Ohio, winning them by nearly double-digit margins. This came after eight years of Obama dominance in the state. And in 2020, Democrats thought they could flip both of these states back. According to the polling, Trump was only supposed to win in both of these states by 1%. In fact, there are many points in time where Joe Biden actually led in the polling in these two states. But in the end, Trump won Iowa and Ohio by virtually the same margins as he did in 2016. And so this time around in 2024, there's no doubt Trump is the easy favorite in both of these lower Midwestern states. Before we continue, 81% of you guys are not subscribed. So please take the time to subscribe right now for more content like this leading up to the election in November. And join Discord server to chat with me personally. Link in the description below. Next up in Texas, the Lone Star State was also thought to be competitive, especially because of liberal-leaning polls that had the state within the margin of error. In fact, Trump was only supposed to carry the state by 1%, just like in Iowa and Ohio. But in the end, he won the state by nearly six points. There was never really any doubt, there never should have been any doubt, that Texas was going to go red. Joe Biden never stood a chance there, but the Democratic polls and all of their rhetoric made it seem like Texas could actually flip blue. And yes, the state generally is shifting to the left, but for a Democrat to win a presidential election in Texas, we're not going to see that for at least a couple of decades. It is such a large state, and having to flip those millions of voters required for Democrats to win here, that is going to take a very long time. And by the point that happens, the Midwest will have already transformed into a Republican stronghold. And so what we're seeing generally in the country is that the Sun Belt is shifting to the left while the Midwest shifts to the right. And so in Texas, Texas, the state is currently going to be likely red in the future. The elections here will definitely get more competitive, but that is not going to be an issue for the GOP for quite a while. We also have Florida, and at this point, compared to 2020, Florida is basically a free 30 electoral votes because four years ago, Trump didn't have the Sunshine State in the bag. Florida was supposed to be one of the most competitive states in the country, and that really did make sense. In 2012, Florida was the only tilt state on the map. When Barack Obama won states like Iowa and Ohio, he barely won Florida. In 2016, Trump wins Florida again by a tilt margin. It was still highly competitive. But then in 2020, nobody thought that Joe Biden would do worse than Hillary Clinton in the state. Trump actually improved from his performance against Clinton. And so as a result of this, Florida is now seen as significantly more conservative, especially compared to where it was four and eight years ago. In 2022, we saw Ron DeSantis get reelected by a 20-point margin in the gubernatorial election. So Florida is a red state now. It's probably not going to go to Trump by more than 15 points, but it might go to him by around 7 to 10. But there's no doubt that he is going to win. These 30 electoral votes, which were not at all a guarantee for him in the last election, they are now a virtual guarantee for the GOP and in turn for Donald Trump. We also have the 2nd District of Maine that is going to be likely red as well. And so now we're left with just 12 states or with a total of 128 electoral votes. It is these states that are actually going to decide the election. Without them, no candidate can realistically get to 270. And Trump, he is already just 51 electoral votes away, while Kamala Harris isn't even at 200. And now looking at the latest swing state poll from Emerson College, these are amazing numbers for the former president, especially considering that Emerson College is a left-leading pollster. They heavily overestimated Joe Biden in 2020, and that is why these numbers are so good for Trump. He leads in three of the seven swing states. In an additional three, the candidates are tied. And if, honestly, if you have a tie in a state, Trump is probably going to win, as he is still underestimated in polling. The only one swing state where Harris has a lead in is Michigan, where she leads by just 1%. This is appalling for the vice president. She is doing unbelievably bad in many of these states that she needs to win. She must win Wisconsin. She must win Pennsylvania. If she can't even lead in the polling there, she is not going to win. Joe Biden led in the polling in Wisconsin by 8%. He won it by 0.6. He led in Pennsylvania by 6%. He won it by just one. Where Kamala Harris is right now in relation to both Hillary Clinton in 2016 and Biden in 2020, she isn't even close to where she needs to be. And so we're now going to fill in the lean states that are going 
going to be decided by margins between 2 to 7%. These are going to be very, very competitive states. We're going to see a lot of campaigning in all of these states. And starting off with the lean Harris states, we have New Mexico. This is definitely a state where she is vulnerable as Hispanic voters continue to shift to the right. And in the future, Democrats are just going to have a harder and harder time winning the state. But that probably isn't going to be too much of an issue in 2024, considering Joe Biden's double-digit victory here in 2020. Democrats still definitely have an advantage. We also have New Hampshire and Maine, two northeastern states that can definitely get very close like they did in 2016. Clinton only carried New Hampshire by 0.37% and Maine by 2.9%. Joe Biden did do much better in 2020, winning both of them by nearly double-digit margins. But in 2024, Kamala Harris is going to win these states by around 3 to 5 percentage points. And so this puts Harris at just over 200 electoral votes. But for Trump, we have a pretty long list of lean states, starting in North Carolina. This is the only swing state that voted red in both 2016 and 2020. Nevada was the one that Trump never won before, but eight years ago, he did win North Carolina along with Georgia, Arizona, and the Blue Wall. In 2020, he lost every single one of those except for North Carolina. And there's no doubt the Tar Heel State is going to stick with him once again. It is going to go red for a third time in favor of the former president. We also have Georgia, 16 electoral votes. This was the closest state in the 2020 election. Joe Biden won it by 0.24%. And yes, Democrats did do very well here in the last election, but this was under extraordinary circumstances that favored the Democratic Party. We had a year-long pandemic. We had an economy that was in recession as a result of the pandemic. And that was the only reason why Joe Biden was able to flip states like Georgia and Arizona, maybe even Wisconsin. Wisconsin. If COVID-19 was on a thing, Trump probably would have been reelected four years ago. And so Georgia is going to be red on our map. Trump is pretty easily going to win it. It is still fundamentally a red state. 2020 was more of a fluke, really. In 2016, Trump won the state by more than five points. We also have Arizona. Once again, another very close state from the last election. Kamala Harris simply isn't doing well enough here to actually win. It's a state that Trump won by nearly 4% in 2016. And according to Poly Market's new odds, Donald Trump has a 62% chance at winning Arizona. In fact, his odds are higher here than in both North Carolina and Georgia. Next up in Nevada, this is another state where Trump is doing a lot better than he was four years ago. In the polling against Joe Biden, he was supposed to lose the Silver State by five to six points. In the end, Joe Biden didn't even do any better than Hillary Clinton, even though he improved off of her performance in virtually every other state. And so Nevada is shifting to the right. We saw in 2022 Republican Joe Lombardo win the governorship, unseating the incumbent Democrat. And so Donald Trump really has a very good chance at winning a state that no Republican has won in 20 years. And so I do have Nevada as being lean red, with Trump winning it by just over two percentage points. Moving on now to the Midwest and the three blue wall states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. These are among the most important states in the country. In fact, Pennsylvania is really getting the spotlight now because a lot of people believe that it's going to come down to the Keystone State. And looking at the map of 2016, you'll see why these three states are so important. Before 2016, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania were not considered competitive. These three states had gone blue for nearly three decades before. Trump flipped them eight years ago. And so in 2016, it was these three states that won Trump the election. And then in 2020, it was these three that won Joe Biden the election when he flipped them back. Joe Biden was supposed to win Pennsylvania, again, by six points, Wisconsin by eight, Michigan by seven. In the end, he very narrowly came out with a victory. In fact, if Joe Biden lost Wisconsin, Georgia, and Arizona, all states that he won by less than 0.7%, he would have lost the election entirely. That was how close 2020 was, and Kamala Harris currently is performing much worse than he was four years ago. So Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, I have going to Trump by just over two points. And finally, we're left with just two tilt states and one congressional district, all of which will be decided by two percentage points or less. I'm going to start off by giving Trump the second district of Nebraska. While up in Minnesota, the only reason I'm giving the state to Kamala Harris is because she chose Tim Walls to be her running mate. 
stayed the state's literal governor. If Joe Biden had stayed in the race, there's no doubt Trump would have came out on top here, a state that no Republican has won in 52 years. And then down in Virginia, considering the new polling that we've gotten over the last few days, Virginia is going to be highly, highly competitive. I would say right now that this state is a pure toss-up. There's still a very good chance that Kamala Harris holds on to the state. Virginia hasn't gone red since 2004. But all things considered, considering Kamala Harris's poor performance in relation to President Biden, and then, of course, the fact that Trump almost always surges in the polling at the very end of the election season, for right now, I'm going to place Virginia into the tilt red column. And so based on the new numbers we've gotten, Trump could win up to 326 electoral votes, Kamala Harris at 212. This would be by far the worst Democratic performance since 1988. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe right now for more content like this leading up to the election in November. And follow me on Twitter for daily political updates. Link in the description below.